Phalaenopsis Zebrina Palawan. This flower is already fading. And I also really love the name of this one as well. Yes, I'm so weak. Every plant lover's dream. My name is Rachel and I run my own houseplant business here in Auckland, New Zealand called Growing Green. Check us out at www.growinggreen.nz And this is our YouTube channel where we make videos all about houseplant and houseplant related supplies, tips and tricks and behind the scenes of the small business. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you get notified when we upload. So I'm going to get straight on into the video. Today I'm going to be repotting some of my orchid collection, mainly because I did get a few new ones in at the orchid show I went to recently in Tepuki. If you're in New Zealand, I'll link the Orchid Council website down below so you know when all the shows are on and can go and see them and you pick up some plants for yourself. Not that I'm enabling, but I'm enabling. Um, but yeah, they all need a little bit of a repot and some of the ones on my shelf need a repot as well. This is part of my reorganizing my greenhouse series before I go away on holiday, which is now like seven weeks away. So I still need to do that. I need to do my Hoya, like I said in my last video. So I am going to be doing that. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my Hoya collection video up here before I have chopped and propped everything. But yeah, let's just get straight on into it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the orchids that I recently purchased because they are still in flower and they're the ones probably in most desperate need of repotting. So let's start with probably, I'd say maybe the biggest one. And this is her here. This is my Phalaenopsis Zebrina Palawan cross self. I'll put all of the names in order down in the description box down below so you can pick one up for yourself as well. And of course on the tag where I got it from, the Nox Orchids. As you can see this one is super healthy, it's really large, it has like four spikes I believe. One, two, three and four. So these two are still coming into flower which means once these ones go they're actually already sort of starting to fade. This one at the top here is not looking too good. I did only get this plant a couple of days ago like three or so days ago um, but the reason they fade so fast is because they're also changing environments really fast as well. They've been in their greenhouse then they drove them down to Tepuki which is in Tauranga which is about two and a half hours from where I live and then obviously I brought it back into my environment so they don't like that at all and that's why flowers can fade pretty quick after picking them up from orchid shows. So I'm going to just repot it anyway. You're not supposed to repot while they're in flower, but this one does need a repot semi badly. There is a big root popping out here. I can see roots coming out the bottom here, and hopefully, you can see that. But the top is actually full of moss. Now this obviously isn't hurting the plant, it's clearly doing fine, but I like to just tidy them up a little bit when I get them, and of course spray them for bugs, wipe them down, although I never ever ever get any bugs from the cellar ever. So yeah. I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you what I'm going to be putting them up in. Now my go-to mix is normally straight tree fern fibre, however lately I have been using a mix of fern fibre and orchid bark because sometimes for phalaenopsis it can stay a little bit wet for too long, so I like to add a little bit of orchid bark in there, get a little bit of extra drainage going on and they seem to love that. So. Let me see if I can find an example of that for you. Okay, I found the perfect example. This plant is not in flower, but the roots are doing really, really well. Hopefully you can see that in there. Look at all those juicy, juicy roots. They absolutely love it. Look, oh yeah, so happy in that. So that is the mix that I'm going to be using. So I have four plants about that size. So I'm going to be using, I think 12 centimeter pots. It's a little bit of a step up from what they're in, but Phalaenopsis orchids like to be a little bit root bound. But the reason I'm putting them in 12s rather than 10 centimeter pots is because they seem to grow really, really fast in my greenhouse. And the idea with orchids is to repot them as less as possible. So I want them to last one to two years in these pots rather than six months and have to repot again. So. Let me go and get at least four 12 centimeter pots. So I'll show you just how much of an upgrade it is. I can easily slide this one in here and it's still got quite a bit of space. So that should be perfect for hopefully at least a year. I repotted some of my Phalaenopsis like six months ago and they're already outgrowing their two size bigger pot. So <laughs> you can already try, right? Okay, so let me get some fern fiber. Oh, I'm gonna have to go and get some orchid bark because I don't have a tub of orchid bark in here, which I should. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so funny story with these orchids and the show that I went to on the weekend, the Tapuki Orchid Show. I went there and I always go to Ninox's stall um, because they always just have the best Phalaenopsis. And I went over there and I saw two orchids. And I actually saw four that I loved, but I picked up two. I was a good person and I only picked up two. Went away feeling really proud about myself. And I actually met a friend of mine while I was there who also runs a plant shop. I'll link it down below for all you Kiwis, the WM Rare Plant Shop. 
and he was there as well and had a look around and he said he was going back the next day when I was home and what did you get and I showed him what I got and he said oh is there anything you know else you you wanted and I said well there actually was two other fellow lobsters that I wanted and he said would well, you want me to go back and get them for you and ship them to you and I said you're the biggest enabler ever so if you're watching this you're an enabler but anyway he went back and got them for me and shipped them up to me and they arrived today and they're in perfect condition so I love you so much I owe you a favor <laughs> okay let me go and get some bark real quick to stay camera <laughs> so this is not like an exact mix but I'm kind of doing 50 50 orchid bark to fern fiber so I'm just gonna pull this out this bark I'm using is called a New Zealand number two bark, which means it's not the finest bark, but it's not like chunky either. It's just really, really small. I'm still gonna keep it, I think, actually a little bit more fern fiber heavy. Let's take this out and have a look. A lot of the times orchids do need a little bit of help with their roots. They might need a bit of trimming or anything like that. So let's unpot it without destroying it. Look at that. So these actually look really, really good. I see no problems with these at all. Oh, except that one. That one's a little bit dead, but that's fine. It's better to get rid of the uh, dead roots before you repot them, because otherwise it's just going to rot in the pot and cause more root rot, and it's just a vicious cycle. So it's better to chop them before you pot them. Put that on a t-shirt. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a tip on how to find what is a good root and a bad root. Good roots are pretty obvious, they're like these, they're thick, they're juicy and happy and healthy. A dead root looks like this one here, and hopefully you can see it. It's sort of like shriveled up the top and discolored. All you want to do is just chop it off. And you'll be quite surprised on how orchids can live on such like little root systems. All it needs is one or two really good roots to keep thriving. So if they're all dead apart from one, don't panic. It will be fine. Let's fill this pot. It's also a good opportunity to stand them upright. In nature, orchids do, sorry, I'm bring it around this way. In nature, orchids do sit like that. Do I want to mount some of these? Oh no, don't get me started. No, I'm going to put them in pots. <laughs> I will mount some of them next year. Or if I get any really little ones in. But yeah, like I said, in the wild, they do actually lay sideways on the sides of trees and stuff like that. That's why a lot of orchids do really good mounted. Um, but at the moment, I'm just trying to clear out my greenhouse and make some space to see what I can actually put in here. So you're going to go in a pot for now. I can always mount it later. Give it a couple of good taps. This one's probably still going to lay over anyway because it's a little bit top heavy. Ta-da! There we go. That is all repotted. Now I'm going to water it in with a little bit of fertilizer. Um, put the tag back in, obviously, so I don't forget what it is. It is currently April here in New Zealand, so it is a little bit touch and go weather wise to repot them but we are having some really really warm days still so i think it's still fine it'll be fine <laughs> okie dokie orchid number two this one is actually this flower is fading very quickly which makes me sad but this one has been on my wish list for a very very long time and this is phalaenopsis bellina but yeah, as you can see this flower is already fading so i actually think there is two plants in here too so we might get lucky let's have a look that one came out nice and easy. Holy moly. Look at the roots on that. That is perfect. I don't know if you can see that. There's like two leaves here that sort of look like a new plant. But I don't know. I don't want to pull it off just in case I destroy it. So I'm going to leave it as is. Again, those roots are perfect. So let's pot it up. Um, I would link where I get all of these from. Like my phalaenopsis at the shows. Um, for you Kiwis. But they don't have a website. So... <laughs> I mean, they have a Facebook page. I guess I could put that down below. But I don't think they do a lot of online shipping. So please don't hound them and don't tell them it was my fault. So I'm going to set it up a little bit more like that. My goal at the end of all of these, like, repotting videos is to do one big houseplant tour. So, like, all of my collection, go through it and show you everything if you haven't watched any of my other videos i do have a shop obviously like i said in the beginning um and i was propagating plants for that shop however i feel like the pressure to propagate so many plants was like draining the joy for me for house plants so i stopped doing that and now i'm just collecting for myself and if i get a cutting or you know i propagated something because it's getting too big or unruly then i'm gonna put it on the shop and i find that I've like had so much more joy in my plants again and I find that the plants that I do have are doing way better 
um, because obviously I'm more motivated to look after them because they're plants that I love and enjoy. So yeah, that is the story on why I'm sort of doing this series. I've honestly been collecting orchids so much over the last six months. Cause I look at my greenhouse and I literally see that half of it is now orchids. And I'm like, oh, okay. That got out of control really quick. Mainly Phalaenopsis. I'm not so much a Cattleya person. I do like Bulbophyllum. Don't do Masdevallia. They hate me. Oncidium, I can grow really well, but I can never get them to flower. And Paphiopedilums, I only ever had one reflower for me and I have like five of them, so I've stopped buying those. <laughs> and I might on sell those. You know, it's better to get joy out of the plants that you love and you know you can grow, than buy ones that you can't grow and be disappointed every single time. So this is the next one. This one is one that I saw on the actual display. And a lot of the times on orchid shows, people bring their personal collections for the displays. And there's obviously vendors on the outside of the hall and you really want to buy the plant that's on the display. Like, do you have one of those? And they don't have them because it's plants from their personal collection. But every now and then you get lucky and there will be a couple of plants of the one on display for sale. And this was one of those moments. And I also really love the name of this one as well. It gives me the giggles. So this is her hair. She is super cute. This is Phalaenopsis Yang Yang Spice Girls. <laughs> I absolutely love the name of this. I think it is so perfect. They had one of these on display and it had like four or five flowers on it and it smelled divine. So that is the reason I picked this one up. I so almost bought it when I was there and I didn't. I was so good and I walked away and then they sent to ship it to you and I said yes I'm so weak but that's okay let's uh repot this one and I do think this one actually does have multiple plants in it this one is quite wobbly in the pot oh geez in the pot as well as you can see so this one definitely needs a repot regardless Ta -da, beautiful look at those roots <gasps> look this this plant is already falling away look look <gasps> yes I have a baby oh my gosh and there's another baby here too oh my gosh Look, ah, yes, yes. Ah, this is so exciting. So I actually have three of these. Yes. Every plant lover's dream. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. <laughs> okay, so I need some little pots for those two, but I'll pot up the big one first. If you're watching this and you're into orchids, let me know what your favorite orchid is, what your favorite orchid type is and what the reason is that you buy orchids. Do you buy them for specifically for the flowers? Do you buy them because they're scented or not scented or you don't care? Or you just kind of buy what you see, like me? I don't really have like a wish list, apart from the Bellina. That was my like number one wish list, uh, orchid. Uh, but other than that, I just go to shows and you know have a look around and see what I like. I used to only buy orchids at shows if they were in flower. Like I didn't even bother if they weren't in flower. Um, but now I'm kind of like, well, I know how to grow them. So it will flower eventually. And it's a bit more satisfying, you know, buying them out of flower and then flowering them for the first time, which I have quite a few doing that this year as well, which is really, really exciting. And that also means I can take them into like my orchid club and stuff like that and show them off because I know I grew it and it's so much better. There we go. So that is way better. It's sitting in its pot now and it's still a little bit wobbly, but as it grows more roots, it will stabilize. It's more upright. And the pretty little flower is just sitting off the side there. I'm going to put them in little seven centimeter pots, I think. And I have them right here. Yeah, I think that will be perfect. Again, still a little bit big, but enough room to grow. Also, just something really random. I've been so into YouTube lately and I've been finding all these new like Palanti creators and stuff like that and watching their videos and it's so inspired me to like make more videos and just make videos about everything like this repotting I would have normally like not filmed because you know I just didn't think anyone would be interested or I thought I wouldn't have anything to talk about in these videos but all I do is bloody talk and I don't stop let me know who your favorite plant youtubers are down below um I'd love to like pick up some more channels to watch and I might download some videos actually to watch when I'm on the plane in a few weeks time going to Canada. I don't even know if you can do that. I think you can. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm gonna do it and I have no idea. So that is one down. Look how cute that is. It's so cute. I need to make my own labels for them too before I forget what they are. I'm also going to be doing a full uh, orchid collection video as well, but a little bit later on in the year because 
I'd rather do a video with more orchids and actual flower that I can show you because I can do what I did with the Hoya one and just pop up all the, the flower photos but it's not as fun when it's with orchids because they all look the same or a lot of them look the same uh, not in flower so that's quite boring to watch in my opinion all right let me write some quick labels okay the last one i have to repot that is in flower i could not pass this one up look how beautiful it is this one is phalaenopsis zhang min yu crossed with zhang min hazel look at that oh it's so pretty i think this is actually the last orchid show i'm going to before i go on holiday so thank goodness for that i am going to change this pole out though because it's just a wooden stick and i'm going to put it onto one of my nice ones now i thought my next organizing my greenhouse video was going to be about my hoya and propagating those however um, I am in the process currently of setting up my grow tent and I'm really excited and I'm going to be doing a video about that as well. It should well, possibly be my next video, I think, um, <laughs> depending on how fast I get it set up. Um, it's actually up and running now, but I'm just looking for a few more little accessories to kit it out with, like a floor and some trays to put the plants on and stuff like that. So it should be coming out very shortly after this one. So as soon as that is up and running properly, I will then be doing... Uh, that Hoya repot video hopefully before I go away on holiday uh, if not I'm just going to continue it afterwards so now I just need a stake for this to keep it upright again it doesn't really need it like they can naturally hang but I want to put it on the stake I'm going to be using this little clear stake here they just look a little bit cuter than <laughs> the normal toothpicks so now all the flowers sit upright beautiful stunning lovely all good to go i need to organize my shelves over there to make them all fit i will do that behind the scenes because it takes me a long time to figure out what i'm going to put where i still want to sell a couple of my organs that just aren't you know pushing my buttons tickling my fancy or flowering for me they're gonna go 2024 is the year of getting rid of things that don't serve you anymore okay i'm gonna take a quick look on my shelf and see if anything else needs repotting i think there are a couple i bought a whole lot of orchids from another online shop called orchid obsession again i'll link them down below for kiwis example a so this one i bought from orchid obsession like i said and i bought it as a seedling it was probably i would say along the lines of about this size when i bought it and it's been probably not even six months i'd say three months and it is huge now and it's actually i've just noticed at the bottom there look down at the bottom the one curling up that is a spike and i'm so excited so this one is called phalaenopsis ox little prince and it's pyloric so i will put a photo up on this side here of what the flowers are going to look like this is my first ever pyloric orchid and i'm so excited for it to flower this is its first ever flowering as well as a seedling so it's triple exciting that's what i love about orchids they're just so much fun to grow and when you get flowers out of them it's so satisfying um it's just a sign of you know you're doing everything right but yes this does need a mega repot as you can see the roots are coming out the bottom i've only like i said repotted this six months ago wait hang on oh i actually have it on the tag i love that oh september september last year is when i last repotted that so that's september October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Seven months ago, so I was close. Wow, I've had it that long? Huh, time flies when you're having fun. Um, so yeah, I've had it for seven months, so I was pretty close. And it's already coming out the bottom, so that's not bad. Normally you should, you know, try and aim for a year, but this one just really needs a repot, so that's what's happening. And this one is going to go, honestly, I think in a 12 as well, because it's quite, quite big already. I'm hoping that the roots just, yeah pop through the pot so I don't have to cut the pot I'm trying not to break off that flower spike as I'm grabbing it either come on I don't want to destroy your beautiful roots oh that one's coming out oh geez come on come on ah yes oh my gosh I'm going to also link in the products for this this video down there the fertilizers that I use and I will show you them in the video as well but I honestly think that they have made the biggest difference look at how juicy that is it's so juicy Honestly, repotting orchids is the easiest thing ever. Ooh, another one bites the dust. Where am I gonna put you? It's getting really crowded here. I need a bigger bench. I'm so looking forward to getting like all of my anthuriums into my grow tent. 
because I need some space in here real bad. <laughs> I want to like organize everything by like species or type of plant on each shelf but at the moment it's so higgledy piggledy it just ooh, grinds my gears. All right I had to really quickly take all the footage off my camera and download it and offload it and whatever you want to call it. Um, I need to work fast because the light is disappearing. It is 5 30 right now and the light is pretty much gone. This one is my Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory. I've had this one for quite a while now. Here's what the photo looks like. It has bloomed very well for me um, but it has been in this tiny little pot <laughs> the whole time I've had it. So let's upgrade her she's gonna love me for this so hopefully i can just gently pull it out oh gee i heard a snap i don't like that oh yes there we go and again all these roots look wonderful so i'm not actually gonna chop any of them oh no that one i'm gonna chop that's a lie that one's going and that one oh it's gonna be so much happier in this man could even almost give it a bigger pot but whatever Let's not take my own advice. <laughs> I do take my own advice most of the time, I promise. Beautiful, all good to go. I don't think I have too many more to do. I think we're just about done. Okay, two more to go. As you can see, the light is fading fast. So I need to get on with this. Okay, so the next one is actually also in flower. And that is my Phalaenopsis Ludomaniana. Ludomaniana, again, I am so shocking with these names, but it is so pretty. Look at it in the light. Oh, it's so stunning. This one actually is its first flowering. It did have two flowers. It had that one and that one. I didn't flower this. I bought it in flower. So I'm gonna upgrade that to, I think, just a nine centimeter, which is like this size. I should already have that here. And then I do, yippity doo da. Ta-da, happy as ever. All right, this final one. This one is called Phalaenopsis Equestrius Var Apari. Again, sorry if I butchered it, but here is the photo here. Again, this is one that I saw at an event and someone just happened to have a plant of it, so I was lucky enough to pick it up. And this one is again coming out the bottom. It's not too bad in the pot, but I do want to put it inside a pot. So I might even just repot it into the same size pot, I think depending on what the roots look like. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the same pot. Tough call, but I'm going to. <laughs> so I'm gonna reuse that fern fiber because it's so good. I really do want to try mounting um, some of my Phalaenopsis at some point. Um, it's just I've decided to do this in a little bit of a hurry tonight. Save that for another video. When I do that, I will make a video of it. Again, subscribe if that's something you would like to see in the future. So now all of the roots are inside and it is so much better. So the last thing I do before I give them a water is I will use this Plant Buds at Leaf Shine Neem Oil Spray. And what this does is it acts as a preventative for pests. I do spray the greenhouse regularly anyway. Um, but it will also just get off any watermarks, um, you know, stuff like that. The tip with this though for orchids is to not clean the underside of the leaves because that's actually how they breathe. I'm just going to give them a very light spray and I'm using my pink microfiber glove. Again, everything you need is in the description box down below if you're in New Zealand. And I just give them a real quick gentle wipe. So that makes it look all clean and shiny so that can be watered. It doesn't hurt the flowers either. I mean, obviously you don't want to spray them too directly onto the flowers, but if you do get a little bit on the flower, it's not going to kill it. And remember when you are spraying them to not let any liquid sit in the crown of the orchid, because that's what causes crown rot. If you do get any in there, just stick your microfiber cloth in the middle there or whatever cloth you're using and just soak it out so it's not sitting there. My glove is already so dirty. Look at all of the dirt on that glove already. Ugh. All right, this bench is getting way too full. I'm going to water them and take them off as I go. I'm going to be using a couple of different nutrients. I'm going to be using the GT Root Zone to get those roots going. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in, not too much. And then I'm gonna use the Orchid Focus because orchids. So it's almost dark now. I'm gonna head inside. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button if you would like to subscribe to the channel and see more like this and the notifications. Again, leave a comment down below with your favorite orchid or if you even have orchids or if you even like orchids. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.